which is called Missing Link. What do you mean, missing? Creationists are deeply enamored of the fossil record because they have been taught by each other to repeat over and over the mantra that it is full of gaps. Show me your intermediates. They fondly, very fondly imagine, that these gaps are an embarrassment to evolutionists. Actually, we're lucky to have any fossils at all, let alone the massive numbers that we now do have to document evolutionary history, large numbers of which, by any standards, constitute beautiful intermediates. We don't need fossils in order to demonstrate that evolution is a fact. The evidence for evolution would be entirely secure even if not a single corpse had ever fossilized. It's a bonus that we actually do have fossils, a rich seam of fossils to mine and more are discovered every day. The fossil evidence for evolution in many major animal groups is wonderfully strong. Nevertheless, there are, of course, gaps, and creationists love them obsessively. In an earlier chapter, I made use of an analogy to explain how we can make inferences about evolution because we come late to the scene. We're not there to watch evolution happen most of the time, although there is a chapter called Before Our Very Eyes, which does show that there are some very rapid pieces of evolution that we can see. My, my analogy is that of a detective who comes to the scene of a crime, a scene of a murder, obviously after the murder has been committed. So there are no eyewitnesses to the murder. The detective can't see the murder, but can make inferences by looking at clues that remain. And that's the position that we're in, in finding the evidence for evolution. So let's make use again of our analogy of the detective coming to the scene of a crime to which there were no eyewitnesses. The baronet has been shot. Fingerprints, footprints, DNA from a sweat stain on the pistol and a strong motive all point towards the butler. It's pretty much an open and shut case. And the jury and everybody in the court is convinced that the butler did it. But a last minute piece of evidence is discovered in the nick of time before the jury retires to consider what had seemed to be their inevitable verdict of guilty. Somebody remembers that the baronet had installed spy cameras against burglars. With bated breath, the court watches the films. One of them shows the butler in the act of opening the drawer in his pantry, taking out a pistol, loading it, and creeping stealthily out of the room with a malevolent gleam in his eye. You might think that this solidifies the case against the butler even further. Mark the sequel, however. The butler's defense lawyer astutely points out that there was no spy camera in the library where the murder took place, and no spy camera in the corridor leading from the butler's pantry. He wags his finger in that compelling way that lawyers have made their own. There's a gap in the video record. We don't know what happened after the butler left the pantry. There's clearly insufficient evidence to convict my client. In vain, the prosecution lawyer points out that there was a second camera in the billiard room. And this shows through the open door, the butler, gun at the ready, creeping on tiptoe along the passage towards the library. Surely this plugs the gap in the video record. Surely the case against the butler is now unassailable. But no, triumphantly, the defense lawyer plays his ace. We don't know what happened before or after the butler passed the open door of the billiard room. There are now two gaps in the video record. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, my case rests. There is now even less evidence against my client than there was before. Well, I hope you get the point from that. Um, the fossil record uh, isn't actually necessary. There are occasional gaps in the fossil record, but to listen to the way creationists use those gaps, you'd think that to find a gap and the rare places where there is a gap somehow weakens the case for uh, evolution. One of the main places where people have alleged that there are gaps in the fossil record is the so-called missing link, the, the alleged gap that uh, separates us, humans, from other 
apes. So I'm going to read a little bit from the next chapter, which is specifically about human evolution and the now very rich fossil evidence that we have for human evolution. Molecular evidence shows that the common ancestor we share with chimpanzees lived about six million years ago, or a bit earlier. So let's split the difference and look at some three million year old fossils. The most famous fossil of this vintage is Lucy, classified by her discoverer in Ethiopia, Donald Johansson, as Australopithecus afarensis. Unfortunately, we have only fragments of Lucy's cranium, but her lower jaw is unusually well preserved. She was small by modern standards, although not as small as Homo floresiensis, the tiny creature the newspapers have irritatingly dubbed the Hobbit, which died out tantalizingly re recently on the island of Flores in Indonesia. Lucy's skeleton is complete enough to suggest that she walked upright on the ground, but probably also sought refuge in trees where she was an agile climber. There is good evidence that the bones attributed to Lucy really did all come from a single individual. The conclusion from studies of Lucy and her kind is that they had brains about the size, uh, about the same size as chimpanzees, but unlike chimpanzees, they walked upright on their hind legs as we do. Lucy's were a bit like upright walking chimps. Their bipedality is dramatically confirmed by the poignantly evocative set of footprints discovered by Mary Leakey in fossilized volcanic ash. They are usually attributed to a pair of Australopithecus afarensis walking together, perhaps hand in hand. But what matters is that by 3.6 million years ago, an erect ape walked the earth on two feet, which were pretty much like ours, although its brain was the size of a chimpanzee's. It seems quite likely that the species we call Australopithecus afarensis, Lucy species, included our ancestors of three million years ago. Other fossils have been placed in different species of the same genus, and it is virtually certain that our ancestors were members of that genus. The first Australopithecine to be discovered and the type specimen of the genus was the so-called Tong Child. At the age of three and a half, the Tong child was eaten by an eagle. The evidence is that damage marks to the eye sockets of the fossil are identical to marks made by modern eagles on modern monkeys as they rip out their eyes. Poor little Tong child, shrieking on the wind as you were borne aloft by the aquiline fury. You would have found no comfort in your destined fame two and a half million years on as the type specimen of Australopithecus africanus. Poor torn mother, weeping in the Pliocene.